Good morning, everyone. Today is October 2, 2021, Memorial of our Holy Guards and Angels. Let us begin this new JP2 conferences with a prayer, invoking God's presence and love as we go about our activity this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us tell the 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our holy guards and angels, pray for us. St. John Paul II, pray for us. St. John Bosco, pray for us. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good morning once again. This is Father Donnie, and I am moderating the St. John Paul II and Education Track of the 2021 New JP2 Conferences, brought to you by Salesiana Books by Don Bosco Press Incorporated and the Salesians of Don Bosco of the Philippine Northern Province. Before we proceed any further, let us, let us get to know the new JP2 Conferences through this audiovisual presentation. St. Pope John Paul II turns 101 years old this year. And as a tribute to this great catechist, youth minister, pastoral communicator, pastor, and educator, we bring you the new evangelization workshops in honor of this great saint. The new JP2 started more than a decade ago to assist youth ministers catechists, and faith formators to keep up with the challenges of the times. This pandemic has brought about pastoral concerns and challenges, particularly the need to highlight evangelizing by educating, educating by evangelizing through value formation, effective faith formation, and social media education. This year, we highlight the special role played by St. John Paul II as a catalyst for various church ministries, catechesis, youth ministry, pastoral communication, family ministry, and education. At the 101st birth anniversary of St. Pope J.P. II, it is fitting that we explore the various ministries in the church where he contributed significantly. And our reflection and study on his contribution can spur us to realize the new evangelization in terms of new method, new fervor, new expression. Thus, the new JP2 2021 offers the participants in their specific ministries to venture towards the new evangelization inspired by St. Pope John Paul II. On this first track on education of the new JP2 conferences, we have this very relevant topic as we are on the first day of the Triduum in celebrating the Teacher's Day on October 5, and of course, we are in the year-long celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in our country. Our topic this morning is Catholic education in the Philippines, where to after 500 years of evangelization. To help us with our reflection, we have invited the resource person who is a sister of the Congregation of the Religious of the Virgin Mary, or RVM, a Filipino congregation founded by Mother Ignacia del Espiritu Santo in 1684. As a school administrator, she is involved in various educational associations. She is an accreditor of the Philippine Accrediting Association of Schools, Colleges and Universities, or PAASCO, and from 2019 up to the present, she has been the vice president of the same organization. She is currently the president of the University of the Immaculate Conception in Davao and also president of the RVM Educational Association of the Philippines. Last September 2020, she was elected as president of the Catholic Educational Association 
of the Philippines, Arceya, breaking the record as the first woman president after 80 years. With her vast experience in education, she has been a speaker in educational administration, strategic planning, school financial management, quality assurance, transformative education, and internationalization. Friends, let us welcome our guest speaker, Sister Maria Marisa Reyes Viri, RVM. I thank the organizers of the JP2 conference for inviting me to talk about the topic Catholic Education in the Philippines, Word 2, after 500 years of evangelization. The talk aims to inspire and challenge those who accompany our young people, particularly religious educators, catechists, youth ministers, and faith formators. In the course of my talk, I will share what various church documents say about the mission of Catholic education and the role of Catholic educators. We will look at the various issues and challenges that Catholic schools face in contemporary society and the role of school leaders in addressing this. I hope to provide a roadmap that can guide the Catholic schools in pursuing their mission for the next 500 years. I will also be sharing the programs of the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines, or CEAP, as it envisions a world transformed, a Philippines renewed by the people educated in the principles of communio and service. We celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines in joy and thanksgiving for the gift of faith. What then has been the contribution of Catholic education in nurturing this faith? What or how should Catholic education be like for the next 500 years? Education is a mission of the church given by Christ himself. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. To pursue this mission, the Church established schools to serve the faithful. From the CBCP Pastoral Letter on the 500 Years of Catholic Education in the Philippines, issued on January 29, 2012, we know that Catholic education in the Philippines has a long and rich history. The Augustinian missionaries opened the very first school in Cebu after they arrived in 1578. In the same pastoral letter, it says that the contribution of the missionaries who began the task of education in the faith was not limited to Catholic education but included even other sciences and disciplines. More than 1,500 Catholic schools and universities are spread across the country. These Catholic educational institutions provide quality education around the country, not only in major cities, but also in remote towns and the peripheries, while relying mainly on their resources and efforts. For a developing country like the Philippines, it is not surprising that Catholic education is almost always associated with Catholic educational institutions. Vatican II's Declaration on Christian Education, Gravissimum Educationis, directs Catholic schools towards the integral formation developing all dimensions of the human person. It also emphasizes the integration of faith, culture, and life. This is to attain the true aim of education, which is the formation of the human person in the pursuit of his ultimate end and of the good of societies, which he is a member and whose obligations as an adult he will share. According to Pope Benedict XVI, 
Catholic educational institutions should have three goals to be able to fulfill their primary mission to allow students to encounter the living God who is Jesus Christ reveals in His transforming love and truth. These objectives are, first, to provide an environment where students can build and deepen their relationship with God. Second, foster an academic culture to pursue truth. And third, actively promote growth in virtue. The role of Catholic educators is essential in fulfilling this mission of the Church. First and foremost, Catholic educators must serve as witness in words and deeds. The document, Lay Catholics in Schools, Witnesses to Faith, detail the specific character of their vocation and presents a true picture of the laity as an active element, accomplishing an important task for the entire church through their labor. In the religious dimension of education in a Catholic school released in 1988, it states that the prime responsibility for creating this unique Christian school climate rests upon the teachers. Less than 10 years, the document, The Catholic School on the Threshold of the Third Millennium, was issued. The document includes the fundamental characteristics of schools necessary to be effective agents for the church and the need to recruit teachers who are competent, convinced, and coherent educators who serve as a reflection of the one teacher, Jesus Christ. As Catholic schools pursue their evangelizing mission, there is the challenge of decreasing enrollment and the increasing migration of teachers from private Catholic schools to public schools. The free or low cost of public education and the ever-increasing salaries of teachers in public schools hugely impact Catholic schools. This situation has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, an additional challenge to, to the already struggling Catholic schools. Hence, of equal importance is the role of school leaders. School leaders need to give attention to the current and emerging issues confronting their institutions in terms of church priorities, as well as current trends and development in education. They have to understand the complexity of these issues so that in their context, they may be able to be faithful to the mission of their institutions. There is also a need to develop approaches to address the sustainability of their institutions. This was very evident during this COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the odds and the significant devastating effects of the pandemic, Catholic schools relentlessly pursued their mission. School leaders adopted and used various strategies to continue operations and make learning resources and support services available to ensure that Catholic education continued. Moving forward, after 500 years, in view of church teachings and taking into account the needs and challenges of contemporary society, what or how should Catholic education be like? Preparatory to the 50th anniversary in 2015 of Declaration on Christian Education, Gravissimum Educaciones, the Congregation for Catholic Education issued Educating Today and Tomorrow, a renewing passion which describes the impact of contemporary culture as an educational emergency. The document discusses current and future educational challenges for Catholic schools and higher education institutions. The challenges for Catholic schools include the challenge of identity, dialogue, integral education, limited resources and means, the religious formation 
of young people, teachers lifelong training, and specific challenges for multi-religious and multicultural societies. For higher education, the challenges outlined, aside from those mentioned earlier, were those that deal with the internationalization of university studies, the use of online resources in university studies, the quality of academic institutions, governance, and the challenge of change, and universities' Catholic identity. These are some of the challenges that we are already facing today in this very volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous or VUCA world. To address some of these challenges, we at the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines, or CAP, launched the Philippine Catholic School Standards, or the PCSS, in 2016 as a landmark document to celebrate our 75th founding anniversary. The PCSS is a self-assessment tool crafted to help raise school-wide effectiveness by establishing standards, benchmarks, and rubrics that identify and distinguish the core characteristics of excellent Catholic schools. CAP member schools have used this as a guide and a roadmap as they strive to deliver transformative education to their students and ensure their Catholic identity. The first document released in 2016 was for basic education, and we are set to launch the PCSS for higher education in November this year during our annual National Assembly. We have discussed our mission as educational institutions. We have looked into the role of teachers and school leaders. Now, let us zoom in on the recipients of Catholic education, our students. On July 9, 2012, to prepare for the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines, the CBCP issued a pastoral letter on the era of new evangelization. It stated that the task of new evangelization in Asia is to consider the new methods and means for transmitting the good news more effectively to our people. The said pastoral letter details a nine-year journey for the new evangelization with a different theme for each year. The nine-year journey served as a roadmap for us Catholic educators in our journey with the church. It also guided us to reflect and assess our contribution to the evangelizing mission of the church, moving us to a renewal of the mission entrusted to us. The journey of the new evangelization challenged us anew to foster in the church and our country a renewed commitment and enthusiasm in living out the gospel in all the diverse areas of our lives in real life practice, inviting us to become more and more authentic witnesses of our faith as a fruit of our intensified intimacy with the Lord. According to the CBCP, the task of new evangelization stands on four pillars. The first pillar is fostering and fulfilling the Misio Agentes. The second pillar is bringing good news to the poor. And the third is reaching out to those who have drifted from the faith. And the fourth is the awakening or reawakening in faith, forming and animating in Christian life our young people and youth sector groups in both urban and rural settings. Since we are working with young people, the fourth pillar of the new evangelization, we continue to make our journey with them meaningful by listening to them. In an open letter of the Filipino Youth to the Catholic Church in the Philippines, written in May 2018 as part of their preparation for the 2019 Year of the Youth, 
they cited some of their personal traits. They said that since they have been life-given, they want to be life-giving. They are dynamic individuals who are overflowing with blessings, willing and open to learn and to grow when provided with opportunities to do so. They are still in search of their identity or who they are. They are in search for the meaning and ultimately the purpose of their lives, knowing that they are called for something greater than themselves. They said that they feel they are called to act, but still need to be guided and formed because they lack critical thinking and decision-making skills. Hence, they feel hesitant to commit. Knowing these personal traits and the aspirations of the youth, ours then is the responsibility to respond to their needs. At this time in the history of our church, when we are called to reflect on synodality, on how we are journeying together as a people of God, let us more closely journey with our youth. Let us listen to them as we lovingly prepare them for the future. Ignite the fire of hope in them, inspire them to reach their full potentials, and with the witness of our lives, form them to become the missionary disciples who can transform the world. This call of listening to the young is underscored in the message of Pope Francis on October 15 during the launching of the Global Compact on Education. The compact, sponsored by the Congregation for Catholic Education, is meant to encourage change on a global scale so that education may become a creator of fraternity, peace, and justice. According to the Pope, the pact is to ensure that everyone has access to a quality education consonant with the dignity of the human person and our common vocation to fraternity. Pope Francis, during the launch, declared that education is meant to be transformative. He continued by saying, to educate is to take a risk and to hold out to the present a hope that can shatter the determination, that can shatter the determinism and fatalism that the selfishness of the strong, the conformism of the weak, and the ideology of the utopians would convince us is the only way forward. Pope Francis wants a process of education that leads future generations to pay attention to grave social injustices, violations of rights, terrible forms of poverty, and the waste of human lives. He wants the integral process to take into consideration the problems that beset young people today, such as depression, addiction, aggressiveness, verbal hatred, and bullying. This process should also pay attention to the scourge of violence, the abuse of minors, the phenomenon of child marriage and child soldiers, and the tragedy of children sold into slavery, as well as the sufferings endured by our planet. In a way, this becomes our new roadmap in the next 500 years. This will guide us to where we ought to go when we talk about Catholic education. In this global compact, Pope Francis asked us to commit to the following. First, to make human persons in their value and dignity the center of every educational program, both formal and informal, in order to foster their distinctiveness, beauty, and uniqueness, and their capacity for relationship with others and with the world around them, while at the same time teaching them to reject lifestyles that encourage the spread of the throwaway culture. Second, 
to listen to the voices of children and young people to whom we pass on values and knowledge in order to build together a future of justice, peace, and a dignified life for every person. Third, to encourage the full participation of girls and young women in education. Fourth, to see in the family the first and essential place of education. Fifth, to educate and be educated on the need for acceptance and in particular, openness to the most vulnerable and marginalized. Six, to be committed to finding new ways of understanding the economy, politics, growth, and progress that can truly stand at the service of the human person and the entire human family within the context of an integral ecology. And seven, to safeguard and cultivate our common home, protecting it from the exploitation of its resources and to adopt a more sober lifestyle marked by the use of renewable energy sources and respect for the natural and human environment in accordance with the principles of subsidiarity, solidarity, and a circular economy. We are called on to listen not only to the young, but also to the cries of the poor and the marginalized, and to listen to the cries of our suffering planet. In CEAP, we have our pillar programs on justice and peace, ecological integrity, engaged citizenship, poverty reduction, gender equality, and youth empowerment, or the GIPG, as our brand of transformative education. GIPG responds to the call of Pope Francis to engage society at all levels. This kind of education allows the individual to fulfill God's dream for all people, a just, peaceful, and harmonious world. The general orientation of the GIPG is in writing relationships with God, humanity, and all of creation. The pillar programs are guided by the values of stewardship, human dignity, integrity, equity, love, dialogue, solidarity, and spirituality, among others. CEA Peace means to achieve the goals of justice and peace, ecological integrity, engaged citizenship, poverty reduction, gender equality, and youth empowerment through education are, first, the whole school approach, which means that everything in the school contributes to the attainment of each goal. For example, for justice and peace, this should not be found only in our curriculum across all learning areas or our Christian living classes. It should also be evident in our policies. It should be seen in our facilities. For example, the presence of a green peace garden. It should be part of our advocacies and our research. We should have activities that highlight justice and peace, like a peace camp. In other words, the theme of justice and peace should be part of our entire school culture. This is the same for all the different themes of the GIPG. Second, we should ensure that we have capacity building programs for our entire school community. And third, we should have a mechanism to monitor and evaluate our programs. Finally, we should engage in extensive networking and partnerships with like-minded organizations. Let me expound on this. In our advocacies, we partner with like-minded organizations to achieve our goals. As of the moment, we have a linkage with Pax Christi International through the Miriam College Center for Peace Education. The Justice and Peace Subcommittee is working on a pilot project on cultivating a non-violent school culture. We have also been working with the Living 
Laudato Si, Philippines Movement for an Integral Ecological Education for Our Common Home. We are working with them on the seven Laudato Si Eco Actions for Schools. In addition, the CEAP is also a member of the University Working Group of the Vatican Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development. The role of this group is to promote the Laudato Si goals among Catholic schools worldwide and encourage them to participate in Pope Francis' seven-year journey towards integral ecology, which will be launched in a few days, October 4, 2021. The CAP, through its representative to the University Working Group, gave an orientation on the seven-year journey in a webinar organized by the CBCP and Laudato Si Movement Pilipinas on September 22 as part of the national celebration of the season of creation. Meanwhile, for engaged citizenship and youth empowerment programs, we are currently working with coalitions such as Election 2022, Coalition and Halalang Marangal, Marangal 2022, not only to ensure an honest, transparent, and orderly election, we encourage young people to participate actively in the upcoming 2022 elections by registering to vote participating in voters' education activities and organizing their election-related engagements. For gender equality, our subcommittee is working with the government and other groups to provide gender fair and gender responsive education training. Finally, for poverty reduction, CAP regions have been busy working in Comunio to establish pro-poor programs within respective areas to ensure the sustainability of our small mission schools and ensure that the poor have access to Catholic education. Through our various programs and advocacies, GIPG-related issues and concerns are examined in the light of faith and responses are anchored on the teachings and examples of Christ. We want to underscore the prophetic role of Catholic schools. Ours is the task of announcing the good news in a world beset by poverty, suffering, environmental degradation, injustice, violence, and indifference. So that in a society that is in constant need of renewal, we forge on in our mission of being catalysts of change in the different dimensions of human life, always bearing in mind that the end goal of Catholic education is being conformed to Jesus, the great teacher. The various documents quoted from the Sacred Congregation for Catholic Education clearly presents that Catholic education is an expression of the church mission of salvation and an instrument of evangelization. This has been the mission of Catholic schools since the beginning. This mission has not changed. Perhaps it never will. At the heart of Catholic education is Jesus Christ. Hence, everything that happens in Catholic schools and universities should lead to an encounter with the living Christ. This gives students a strong foundation upon which to build their discipleship to Christ. The mission is the same, but the methods and expressions in pursuit of the mission are different. During these times, we are called to live out our synodality with the students that we are ministering to we are invited to listen more closely to what they need. We are called to make them the center of our educational programs. As we journey with our students, we are also called to journey with all 
the members of the school community, for it is in this lived synodality in our Catholic schools where we encounter God who in Jesus Christ reveals his transforming love and truth. As a faith community, students, parents, and educators in unity with the church give witness to Christ's loving communion in the Holy Trinity. With this Christian vision, Catholic education fulfills its purpose of transmitting culture in the light of faith, integrally forming the human person by developing each student's physical, moral, spiritual, and intellectual gifts, teaching responsibility and the right use of freedom, preparing students to fulfill God's calling in this world, and attaining the eternal kingdom for which they are created. Thank you, and God bless us all. We shall now, now pause for a five-minute health break. Thank you.
Welcome back. At this point of the program, we shall now proceed to the question and answer portion. But before we formally open the floor for your questions and comments, may we just remind you of the following. For your questions, kindly type at any time your questions in the Q&A box. We will accommodate as much questions as time permits. To ask a question in person, you will have to indicate first in the chat box that you would like to ask the question in person, and then, if you are acknowledged, please accept the invite and unmute your microphone and turn on your camera. Microphones will remain on mute and video cameras turned off until the given opportunity to ask the question. of the education track of the new JP2 conferences. We now invite Sister Marisa to share her screen with us. Hi, Sister. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Good morning to all the participants in this conference. Joining us in this question and answer forum is the BED in charge. Sorry. Uh, DBEC in charge of the Basic Education Department of our Don Bosco Schools in the Philippines, Northern Province, Brother Carmelo Martinez, SDP. Hi, Brother Melo. Good morning. Sister Marisa is in Davao. Yes, I'm in Davao. <laughs> Davao. <laughs> While we wait for Brother Melo to switch on his screen, on this end, we are ready now to entertain questions and your sharings in the light of the topic beautifully presented by Sister Marisa. Hi, Brother Melo. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Sister. Good morning, Sister. Um, maybe I, I... Let me read po this uh, question shared with us by one of the participants. Uh, she said, education is meant to be transformative, quoting, the, quoting Pope Francis in the talk of Sister Marisa. I would like to ask for your suggestions or comments, Sister. How does the Catholic education help the young acknowledge or accept their true identity either through academic approaches or in concrete programs. This is in relation to the newly miss to the newly miss universe, Philippines, who graduated in a Catholic university, yet a proud member of LGBTQ group. A very timely question. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing this. <laughs> Sister. <laughs> okay. It's really no, the, the environment where our young people exist is really challenging. So it is really the responsibility of Catholic schools to give the right formation. And we at CAP would always say that we promote transformative education. And it has been a challenge, you know, operationalization of transformative education. Uh, in terms of curriculum, you know, we start with curriculum. Uh, I can share what we, the RVMs, are doing no, in our schools. When we had our curriculum mapping, we already identified formation standards across all subjects. So in that way, no, uh, when you are sure of what you are promoting, advocating as an educational institution and being Catholic at that, Across all subjects, you have a common formation standards that you promote, no? And this is in line with the core values of the institution. So it is very important that an educational institution, uh, although we have art articulated our core values and related values, there should be a systematic way of integrating it in our curriculum. So what is very important no, as we journey with our young, the school should be very specific with their philosophy of education, 
it starts with with the philosophy of education of the school with the pedagogy you no know, the pedagogy is how our teachers journey with our students and we have been saying that christian living is the core of our curriculum meaning to say i repeat across all subjects we do values integration but are we doing it systematically again i can share what uh, our schools are doing we have 49 schools across all over the country and we follow the same curriculum we implement the same pedagogy when we talk of values integration formation standards we have our ignatian core and related values and we have a values master chart and in that values master chart we have identified no uh, behavioral indicators behavioral indicators that our students should be able to achieve as they undergo their formation also in that values master chart because our foundress is mother ignacia we also highlighted no the what are those in the life of mother ignacia that is related in our core values of faith excellence and service and our core values three core values we have related core values for example under faith we have their nationalism justice and communion no and in the course of our values integration in our pedagogy we only do not integrate core and related values we also have meaningful connections of concepts to contemporary and social realities so you are able to in a way clarify you no know, issues social issues social contemporary realities with our students and then we have what we call the four pronged integration so i shared already about the core and related values meaningful connections of concepts uh, to contemporary social realities that is the second the third is we integrate concepts across subject boundaries no we do it thematically so for example if your topic is on peace you talk about peace in christian living and then in english you ask your students to write uh, 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 an article about peace now that's in mathematics you also find a way to integrate peace and the four fourth integration in our four pronged integration is the integration of biblical text that is related to the concepts taught no and uh, in uh, since we did a survey no on the impact of transformative ignatian marian education among our students the result of that survey is very encouraging no in the course of their stay in our institution they really learn no? uh, something happened to them in terms of transforming their outlook in life transforming their views about life so i, I think there should be a systematic orderly way of you no know, of advocating transformative in our institution transformative education this also is being done in our activities no? student activities we have an activity plan and there we also identify what are the core values that we want to develop among our students and then also the biblical text that our students would be able to gain and understand at the end of an activity so it's not only in the curriculum it can also be done in the school activities whether it's curricular or extracurricular further that's how we majority i think of the art of the catholic institutions are doing it that way you no know? so that uh, things that are not that needs to be clarified you no know? considering the exposure of the youth now in social media and uh, other other platforms in other things that they uh, their association with their peers we are able to clarify in our classroom these things thank you sister uh, that's a very substantial response to the question. Uh, Brother Melo, if you have questions. Yeah, siguro, if I may, sister, I, I, by the way, I'm also a proud product of the RVM sisters. <laughs> uh, if, yeah, sister mentioned uh, a while ago about being systematic. So, yung transformative education really should be systematically planned, organically planned, beginning with the philosophy of the school 
of the alignment with the charism and the core values. Siguro if I from the Don Bosco experience, another important key element I would say is integrative. I think sister also touched on it. But really it should be a massive attempt at addressing yung issues. For example, yeah, inside inside the classroom with the subjects proper, pro properly articulated, yung sinasabi ni sister na if it is discussed in CL, yung P, siguro uh, essay on, in English. Together with that, I think that one one way of we were doing it also, we are doing it in in the, in the Don Bosco is uh, also matching it with uh, formation of teachers, formation of parents, student activities. Yung nga, parang there issued a while ago the question is connected was connected to the issue on lgbt i think we cannot just shy away from talking about these issues we really need to talk and discuss about these issues and we need to hear our students opinion their their beliefs their side regarding this matter so that we will be able to properly address Siguro hindi na hindi na Pwede yung, oy bawal yan pag-usapan. Parang ganun. In fact, we need to let these issues be discussed, be talked about in our schools. Pwede po ako magtanong, sister? Yes, sister. brother. Yes, brother. <laughs> yeah, kasi yeah. 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 synodality, you were mentioning, it's very important, lalo na ngayong pandemya, na magtutulungan tayo. For example po, at, at the level of yung SEA, because you are now at the helm of the Catholic Education Association of the Philippines. How are you promoting, working on Catholic schools? Nabagin nyo rin, marami, problema natin, parang yung salary, ganyan, yung support ng government. For example, how do we now promote, how do you concretize synodality among the Catholic schools, especially at this time of the pandemic? Uh, from the start, no, in March 2020, when we already felt the effect of the pandemic, the CAP already conducted several several activities, no, in line with uh, helping schools on how schools will be able to navigate, no, the challenges brought about by the pandemic. We, from the start, we already met and discussed how schools could be helped, no, for example in the delivery of the distance learning. We have several activities that would help the school in line with this. And uh, uh, not only the webinar that the CAP conducted, no, uh, regionally, because we have a region, in all the regions, we have a different council no, that attends to the needs of the different regions. They also address the needs of the different schools. Uh, for the past, year no uh, almost one year and a half na tayo eh. we only did not address how schools will be able to navigate the new normal we also conducted webinar pertinent to formation of teachers we also have uh, conducted webinar on mental health so in a way we have been addressing you know, the different areas of concern and, and in terms of policy you no know, policy advocating policy in the government, we have been actively engaging with the House of Representatives and the Senate, bringing to them our concerns. No? And uh, we, uh, I represent also CAP in the Private Education Assistance Committee. And through PAC, we are able to, in a, in a way, no, advocate uh, helping Catholic schools to be able to to navigate or to be able to as i have said earlier no we are helping school administrators to find ways and means to be able to deliver distance learning in spite of all the limitations brought about by the pandemic so uh, it's not a one time help that we are extending we continuously dialogue with them no, so that we will be aware of their concerns and problems and uh, the association strive to address this. Thank you. Thank you very much, sister. So if we have now attendees who are coming from Catholic schools, so yeah, we promise our support to CAAP. 
and to the to the projects and and uh, uh, plans of CAAP headed by Sister Marisa, of course. Thank you, brother. Sister, we have another question coming from Father Bob Zarate, uh, Salisan from Don Bosco, Canlubang. Hi, Father Bob. Uh, his question, we really are put in the middle of catching up with the world standards slash setting the standards in our society and forming people with really sound Catholic values. As Sayap, if we are to choose, what would it be? Can we truly be forced in the country more than just the names of our schools? Uh, we, we, as I, I shared long in my talk earlier, that uh, CAP launched the Philippine Catholic School Standards for basic education, and soon we will be launching the the Philippine Catholic School Standards for Higher Education. The purpose of this document that uh, we have released is to help schools assess you know, where they are. CAP from the start is promoting transformative quality education. And for the information you know, of those attending, the PAASCO as an organization was born from out of the effort of those who started CAP. So from the beginning, uh, quality education has already been the trust of CAP. And we have been, no, we have been relentless really in promoting transformative education, forming young people. So to ensure that the society will be able to, to have a, a workforce, the society will have, it's not only a workforce, but presence of people who will really be able to influence and be, be able to lead you know, others to sinasabi nga natin, leading all to the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. I think that's really the goal of Catholic education. And as far as CAP and uh, Catholic schools are concerned, no, we have been relentless in doing this. All the difficulties amidst all the struggles, amidst the issue of sustainability, no, we have not stopped. In fact, no, I can speak for RBM schools. We are present in the peripheries, you know, places where there are no other Catholic schools except the RBM, for example, in Samar. You know, we are subsidizing these mission schools, but why do we continue you know, our ministry in places, in these places? Because there are no other Catholic schools, and we would want to be able to to influence our young, you know, for them to be able to achieve our ultimate end. And that is, as I have said earlier, leading all to fullness of life in Jesus Christ. I think that's our ultimate, ultimate goal in life. So I, I could say that the CAP and all Catholic schools would always uh, be persistent, you know, in spite of, as I have said, difficulties that we have encountered. I think even the Don Bosco experienced that, no? especially this time we have decreased in enrollment and that affects our operation. But still we strive to continue no? in spite of all the odds that we encounter because we would want that, uh, as I have said at the beginning of my talk, CAP envision a transformed world, a renewed Philippines. And that would happen, hopefully, through the youth that we minister. And also, I, you, mentioned, I mentioned in my I talk that my talk. when we talk of quality education, no, it's always associated with Catholic educational institutions. Hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, Sister. Sister, one of the challenges in educating today and tomorrow in, in your talk is about the identity po. The, the challenge of identity, not just in the basic education, but also in the higher education. Now, uh, one, one participant is asking po, how do we balance the government demand from us in our Catholic identity as regards values, education, slash uh, GMRC and CL integration? 
Yeah, that's a, really a question. No? We were discussing earlier no? that uh, the Department of Education now for grades one to six is promoting instead of values education, GMRC, and then for junior high school, values education, and then for senior high school, it's also it's still integration of values education across subjects. No, uh, we we in at the CAP we have uh, been breaking discerning. No, up to what extent shall we be asking support from the government? No. Because the moment we really demand support from the government on a wider scale, they will have a way, I'm sorry to say this, no? we have to, to follow just like in other countries, what the government is demanding for uh, different educational institutions. When we talk of Catholic identity, no? as, as uh, uh, that, that's a Catholic uh, identity should be very clear no? to all schools, Catholic schools for that matter that uh, we have to be for um, if i may cite an example no in mindanao particularly in the cotabato area and in hulo there are catholic schools i can speak for two rbm schools in sambuanga and cotabato city where majority of our students are muslims no 60 40 minsan and in hulo maris schools 90 percent are muslim 10 percent is christian but no, the, compos the, the percentage of Muslim in our school, in a way, did not affect no, the identity of the school. No? And how, wh 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 why can I say this? When we had a convention two years ago and we invited our students, you will just be touched no, by how a Muslim student was talking about the formation he got from the RVM school. And I think this is true to all Catholic schools. We have um, uh, students coming from different denominations, but still no, they are able to, to be formed the way we want them to be formed, to be good citizens. No? And when we talk of good citizens as Catholic school, our basis are the gospel values. And I don't think so it becomes a question. So. What I am saying here is regardless of the kind of clientele we have, regardless of the society where we are in, we have to really be very clear of our Catholic identity, of what we are promoting as Catholic schools. Now, that's the only way that we will be able to spread the gospel values if we are sure. We do not discriminate. I think what we are promoting is inclusive education, but nevertheless, no. We do not uh, compromise, that's the word. We do not compromise our Catholic identity. And when they are with us, we have Muslim students in our, in our university. They treat them equally, no? And we provide them formation in line with, with their being Muslim, no? But part of that still is our core values of faith, excellence, and service. So still we are able to promote the gospel values in spite of the different denominations uh, where our students belong. That should be very clear. No? Our Catholic identity should never be compromised. Thank you, Sister. Uh, Sir Michael Angelo Hernandez, one of our, the participants, said, Thank you, Sister Marisa, for that very substantial and insightful sharing. Greater challenges ahead. Uh, Sister, may isang... Uh, participant and she's not an educator she's a parent her quest her question bilang magulang po ng isang mag-aaral sa isang catholic institution ano po ang aming maitutulong as a parent lalo na po ngayong new normal number one siguro po no is students majority of the students is stay at home no so uh, in the global compact on education that was launched last year where uh, one of the compact no one of the commitments that we are asked to to commit ourselves is to see in the family the first and essential place of education so ang ang formation po ng bata talaga nag-start sa family eh. no so 
kahit pagano ka influential ang school if the family is not uh, cooperative no to what the school is advocating to what the school is teaching uh, i i don't think so no formation will happen so now that most of the time students are staying at home we really need our parents and everyone in the household to really be part of the formation of our students we do not only assist them in their academic subjects but first and foremost formation po no so uh, in our in our uh, distance learning framework you know we said that we follow the development framework of 70 2010 no the 10% is the synchronous class kung familiar tayo the 70% is the task performed by the students yung 20% is their social interaction no in spite of the distance learning online learning dapat may 20% eh, na social interaction it could be connected with the lesson it could be connected with the values that we are advocating in the lesson and this happens inside the home no so ang laking tulong po ng magulang not only in academic subject diruan nga no for example grade 1 ang nag attend ng klase ang parents but more than the academic we really need no your help in forming this young to be the person we want them to be that is to be identified with a great teacher who is Jesus very crucial po yung role ng mga magulang sa formation ng bata we can only do as much in the school pag uwi po ng bata kayo na ang kasama and this time during the pandemic 24 hours kayo po ang kasama nila i was even talking father donnie no with one of our sisters is it possible? Kasi ang grade 3 curriculum, I do not know with, with the Don Bosco, is preparing our students for First Communion. So, two, second year na to eh, now we are not able really to have that First Communion for our students in our school because they are at home. So I was, I, I, I would be asking, no, siguro one of these days, our bishop here in Davao, since grade 3 is really preparation for First Communion, Possible ba, Father, that uh, we certify that we prepare the students for First Communion? They can go to the parish. The parents will bring them to the parish and have their First Communion there. Would that be possible? That be possible? I, I think that's possible, uh, Sister. Brother Mela and I did something for our previews for our one of our alumni. He was our student when he was in high school. And he asked Brother Melo to prepare his child. So we got in touch with the parish and arranged the, the first communion for the boy. Mm -hmm. So that's highly possible in, in cooperation and in coordination with the, with the parish. But the parents would really have a very important role. No? The, the school can do the formation and it's the parents really who will bring the child in to the parish. So another role pa yun ng magulang, no? Uh, dati kasi we also have ano eh, a confirmation for our grade 6 students. Uh, that's not uh, really a big challenge kasi parishes naman really hold confirmation. But ang concern namin is the first communion. This is the second batch of grade 3 students. So uh, yun yung iniisip ko, Father, that uh, we could possibly do. No? That we will, we will have a certificate that we form the child and ready to receive uh, communion. That's another role that the parents should be able to do in partnership with the school. Yeah. Per perhaps, sister, uh, a webinar will be useful to prepare our parents mm -hmm. to prepare their children for in their communion. first reception of the communion. Nagkaroon tuloy tayo ng idea. <laughs> and then, if I may add, sister, in fact, that's also a nice move because we are bringing the family closer to their a uh, local parish unit. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Which is also nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, uh, father so I and think brother, part of synodality. synodality. Mm -hmm. No, we were talking of synodality and uh, that's part of synodality. And then it's sister marketing din siya, in a way, kasi, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> kasi sister, you get, 
di ba, our students are coming from different parishes. Yes. So somehow the school, because you are now like entrusting to the parishes, you can write, you can get in touch with the parish. Mm -hmm. So you also, yeah, synodality, we get in touch. Mm -hmm. It's also building networks. It's collaboration. It's partnering with the, because we entrust our students to their rightful parish. So yes, it, yes. there is collaboration. There is, yeah, synodality is the best term. Uh, after talking about the home, we'll now return to the classroom po. Uh, one question po from Sir Michael Angelo. You mentioned, Sister, a while ago about the impact of contemporary culture as an quote-unquote emergency culture. How do Catholic educators in particular prepare themselves to handle such situations? Father, kindly repeat. Medyo nag ano yung signal. Okay. Uh, si Father. Okay, sister. Earlier po, you mentioned that the the impact of contemporary culture as an emergency culture. Now, how do Catholic educators in particular prepare themselves to handle such situations such as emergency culture po? Uh, mentioned earlier, no? Brother Melo and, uh, mentioned earlier, we have formation program for our teachers, no? regardless uh, whether they are teachers, uh, Christian living teachers or teachers in the different subject areas. Yes. So part of their formation program for their teachers. Uh, in one in one uh, activity in our region here, you know, the Davao Association of Catholic Schools uh, invited me to present how how do we operationalize transformative education in in our school. And at the end of my presentation, there was only one question among the participants and a priest: How do you prepare your teachers for that kind of education that you deliver? No, so. Dapat may formation program that should be part of the formation program of the teachers. And formation programs come in different form. Eh. Diba? Meron talagang professional. Spiritual is very important. Uh, exposure of our faculty to social realities is another area no, that uh, should be part of their formation program. Minsan kasi we are so focused with content, strategies. no, But Social issues, social contemporary issues. Do we make them aware of what are these and how should they tackle this inside the classroom? No, that's one thing I observe uh, when I do accreditation. Masyadong nakafocus sa professional growth of the teacher and hardly na makita mo na part of the formation program is on social issues social, contemporary issues. So it's necessary that schools integrate in their professional development program these um, things further so that teachers will be aware and will be able to know how to handle contemporary issues, social issues inside the classroom. Again, across subject areas. Sister, uh, another question about the educators. We acknowledge that in this time of the pandemic, Catholic schools have encountered issues like teachers transferring to public schools and a great number of students from Catholic schools transferring to public schools as well. Do this mean that in this time of pandemic, Catholic transformative education seems not being valued? And how does the SEAP continuously promote in the country its transformative education? Uh, it's a reality, Father, eh, because uh, of the pandemic. No, uh, Although generally, when we, when we talk of Catholic schools, there might be a misrepresentation that they think that Catholic schools are the big schools. No? Catholic schools, there are more small schools than big schools among Catholic schools. 
And uh, w this is a reality now that we are experiencing. We were talking about decrease in enrollment and transferring of uh, teachers in the public school. But uh, uh, an information that I can give to you, soon there will be a department uh, dep ed order or memorandum related to the transfer of teachers in the public school. No? After having, uh, uh, after dialoguing with DepEd for several times on this issue, they are now issuing a, an order pertinent to this, to the different regional offices to address the transfer, especially transfer of teachers at the beginning of the school year or at the middle of the school year. No, so, uh, it's really, I was talking about sustainability, Father, no? and we know very well our small schools are dependent on, shall we say, the tuition that students pay. And because during the pandemic, no, we know that many people, if they did not lose their job, no, some of them na reduce yung work days nila. So it's really an issue of uh, the situation, especially of the breadwinners in the family. So this time, it's really very challenging, Father, eh, with our students transferring to the public school. And because of that, economic kasi ang reason. Eh, no? um, many Catholic schools, uh, as far as I know, really work on the, how, how shall I say it, in the fees that we charge. No, I do not know if Don Bosco did this. We try to reduce what, what, our students will pay. We recalibrated the tuition and the other fees and miscellaneous fees just so that more people will be able to enroll their children in our school. And the value, no, yung, yung uh, transformative education that we are trying to deliver. But in our experience, in spite of that, Father, no, because of the economic impact, hirap talaga eh. But also, the other side of it, we have students going back eh, to us no, after they have, even after a few months, they would even ask, can we transfer? So meaning to say, yung mga nagta-transfer, these are those that saw no, yung difference of what it is being in a public school and in a Catholic school. So kanina nga, I used the word relentless. Eh. In spite of the difficulties that we are encountering, no? We continue. We continue with our mission. Except that, uh, yun na nga, no? it's so difficult. Econo economic na yung pinag-uusapan. And majority of the Catholic schools are recipient of the ESC and senior high school voucher. I can speak for our schools. No? For in majority of our schools, kasi na, more kami sa rural, eh, no? Uh, uh, we, we see to it that we charge very minimal, but instead make use of the subsidy that we are able to get from the government. And yun then we subsidize, the congregation subsidize our mission school so that we will be able to continue you know, the Catholic education that uh, we would want to promote, continue our evangelizing mission. So maraming strategies, Father, that we can do, Brother Melo, just so that we are able to continue our evangelizing mission. It's a struggle, it's a challenge. But as I have said in my talk, walang makakahinto, no, to say it in Tagalog, walang makakahinto sa atin to continue the evangelizing mission that we want to be part of as Catholic educational institution. Yeah, Sister, totoo po yun, if I may add, Kami rin sa mga Don Bosco schools, at least I, I'm speaking of the basic education departments in Luzon, nag-recalibrate kami ng miscellaneous, so really down to the essentials, just to, to also work, to be able to keep our students, but not only that, also to welcome, kasi na-realize din namin, many, I, I'm sorry to tell this, but many of people whom we have encountered are a bit dissatisfied with the Modular yes. MDL. MDL kasi ang many public schools. Eh. So also to accommodate those who are feeling dissatisfied about what happened, especially last year kasi nakukumpare na. So this year, meron po kami yung sinabi nyo rin, returnee. Last year, umalis pero bumalik this year or a few months later. Pero meron din kami na new 
new students from the public schools na they had a negative experience of last year and they hope na sana makahabol yung mga bata. And then yun din, ang dami nga rin pong strategies na at paraan ng pagtitipid, sister, no? Para maitawid. So, pero one concern, hindi ko alam kung question ito, but just a sharing, sister, no? So, also more and more we realize uh, where we are being called. Kami, at least ito po yung na-reflect namin as Don Bosco Schools. Kasi for example, we realize walang katikes, walang katikisim o katike, katikesis ang mga public school ngayon. So how can we reach out to public school students or even to the parishes? Kaya you gave as an idea earlier yung makikikoordinate sa parish. Baka to the parish, we can partner, help them create programs or reach out to non-Catholic school students na nasa parish so that we can catechize them even. Kasi tayo parang secure na yung mga bata in terms of formation, in terms of religious education pag naka-enroll sa Catholic school. So ngayon, medyo iniisip na naman namin in solidarity with all these young people din na nasa public school, how can we be in touch? How can we also serve them in terms of yung evangelization, yung direct uh, lessons, katikisin? Yun po, yun yung nire-reflect namin ngayon. Baka may may add din kayo, sister, tungkol sa concern na ito. Thank you. Yeah, earlier we were talking about our teachers transferring to the public school. No, I, I It's my wish, it's my hope that the formation that these teachers got from us when they moved to the public school, father and brother, sana dala nila, no? Yung, yung, uh, we, we really spend time and effort and resources to form them. So, ang sabi nga ng DepEd in one of our, our dialogue with them, sister, ano, dapat nga maging happy kayo kasi you form teachers. Uh, i, i, yung formation that you give to them, you prepare them to teach in the public school. Sabi ko, sige na nga. <laughs> you look at it in that context na lang, no? That the kind of formation that we give to them, kung talagang na-imbibe, no? And na-imbibe nila whether they will be in another private school or in the public school, sana they will continue, no? Yung formation, uh, how to teach and what to teach, no? That they, they learn from us, sana dalahin nila. That, that's my wish and my hope for those who transfer to other schools, whether private or public. In that way, my contribution pa din siguro tayo sa evangelization. Brother, can you hear Father? No. Father Doni? Father Doni, we can't hear you. Ayan, wala siya. So, <laughs> Tayo na yeah. na iwan. One reality ito ng ano, online technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sister, but let me read one more question. Sige, habang naghihintay tayo kay Father Doni, I'll read this one question. Father Doni. Ay, Father Doni, you're back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brother Melo, is my audio okay? Yes, better. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps that, that will be our last question because we're running out of time. Okay. Ah, uh, this one, this last question. Yes. Let me read it for you, sister. As you said in your conclusion that Jesus is the heart of every Catholic education and everything done in the schools should lead to an encounter with Christ. But there are realities that the pastoral and spiritual growth of the young people in the schools are but an appendix. Mm -hmm. How do educators integrate Jesus in the other aspects of education? Uh, as I have said, no, the core of the curriculum is Christian living. So, sa akin, if it's really the core of the curriculum, hindi siya magiging ano eh. Uh, ano yung word na ginamit, Brother Carmelo? Appendix. Appendix. Because, Jesus is put in the appendix. Yes. I, I don't think so. Appendix siya if Christian living is the core of the curriculum and all the activities that we do in the school. I was also talking earlier about our four-pronged integration. Regardless again of the subject, regardless of the activity that we do, 
for us, RBM, we have the four-pronged integration. Eh. So, nandun siya palagi. No, nandun siya palagi. Uh, so, uh, I, I was saying earlier, dapat also Brother Nelo was said, yung systematic way, no, dapat systematized eh, from the vision mission to the philosophy, to the pedagogy, nandun dapat eh, no, para talagang we are able to lead our students to Jesus. No? Parang ang hirap, ang hirap isipin. No? Ang hirap isipin. And we are also saying, I, 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 do not, I, I think you will agree with me, Father, that teachers should be catechists. What do mm. I mean? No? Na even if you're a teacher of a science subject, andun dapat yung being able to catechize. Eh. So, question na naman natin, no, reality, we have teachers who graduated from institution, siguro product ng public school sa basic ed, product din ng state university, na there is no uh, program for this or Christian living. Again, in our practice, for this kind of teachers, we, we have kasi multi-phasic faculty development program. Eh. For teachers mm -hmm. na galing talaga no, sa, na, sa mga ganitong uh, kind of education, we offer basic catechism. No? Mm -hmm. How can we expect our teachers to be catechists, all of them, if lacking ang basic catechism? So when we do a training needs analysis, Pag lumabas yun, na they lack foundation in the basic catechism, that's part, that becomes part of the training program of the faculty. So, hindi siya magiging appendix if that's the approach that we do. Christian living is the core of the curriculum. And then, yung integration nga, eh, very important. Whether it's in the subject, whether it's in the activity, Palagi sana may integration. And I, I hope this will be practiced by all schools. Hmm. So it does not become an appendix. No? Naka, ano siya? Uh, kanina nga I was saying yung jeep -jee. It's a whole school approach. Hmm. Sa curriculum, hmm. sa activities. Policies is very important. No? Uh, ano bang klase yung policy that we implement in the school? Is it transformative? Mm -hmm. How do we discipline our students? No, mm -hmm. is it formative or we do we still punish them? Mm -hmm. eh, yung, yung whole school approach no of doing transformative education is very important. It's difficult no, but uh, we have to find it to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. I hope But, I answer the question, Father. Apa, Sister Marisa, uh, maraming salamat po. Apa, mm -hmm. uh, you started you started your talk with your aim in this talk po of inspiring and challenging our educators, and I feel I I strongly feel that uh, we are able to achieve that goal po. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Father, uh, for the opportunity also. Apa. Sister, we're wrapping up our first track on education of the new JP2 conferences, but if you have some parting words for our educators. Um, we are having now, Father, the region. Sister. Perhaps you can... General Assembly. Through. Okay, sister. Sister Marisa? Okay. Um, we'll try to uh, get Sister Marisa back on screen. But for the meantime po, uh, we thank Brother Melo for joining us this morning in our question and answer forum. Uh, before we finally end, we would like to invite you to our upcoming tracks. On October 9, we shall have Values, Education, and Christian Living. 
this is a very hot topic and a very hot issue for for us uh CL values education teachers in in the schools so we would like you to to be here and to be present in this talk on october 16 we shall have the Catholic schools from institution to community of faith. And on the last Saturday of the month, programming a holistic education in the time of pandemic and beyond. After we finish the month of October, we shall have the last run of the new JP2 conferences and it will zero in on pastoral communication. Uh, I'm not sure if Sister Marisa could still be back, but we encourage you to attend. Okay, Sister. <laughs> Father? Yes, Sister. Father, I'm back. Yes. Okay. Sister, your final words, Paul. Yes, oh, oh. I, I was saying that uh, in the in my message no, to the different regional assemblies of CAP, I, I work on the theme presence as presence. No? And mm. I was talking about the uh, kind of inspiration that our Catholic educators should give to our students, especially during this kind of time of the pandemic. Mm. More importantly is the witnessing. I, I said in my message that teachers' behavior and character is as important as our educational qualification. So I, I enjoin our uh, Catholic educators mm -hmm. to really live a life of witnessing, witnessing of the gospel values. And lastly is uh, part of the talk is sanctifying the world. Mm -hmm. We can be instruments on how to sanctify the world by living holy lives. So mm -hmm. that's a challenge to inspire the youth entrusted to our care mm -hmm. by our witnessing the kind of life that we live. No? And lastly, let us continue to sanctify the world by living holy lives. That's my parting word, Father, mm -hmm. for all the educators, Catholic educators, who attended this conference. Thank you very much, Father Doni. Sister Marisa, maraming salamat po. I'm not, I'm not a product of an RVM school, <laughs> but I'm proud to be a, a product of a Catholic, of Catholic ed, uh, educational institution. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Sister Marisa, for sharing your experiences, your insights, and your presence. And we truly appreciate it. Once again, for the participants, we encourage you to attend the rest of the fourth track of our new JP2 Conferences on Education. Because once you register and attend, you will receive soon a priority invitation to our 2021-2022 Salisana Books Confer Conference for Educators Online. And for this conference, we will be offering CPD points. So for more details on the upcoming new JP2 Conferences sessions, and tracks, please visit our Facebook page. So again, thank you for joining us today in the education track of the 2021 new JP2 conferences. We hope to see you again in our upcoming tracks. Once again, this is Father Donnie thanking you all and until next time. God bless Paul. Once again, thank you so much for a very enlightening and knowledge-filled question and answer portion. Before we finally end our conference today, a few reminders. To complete your attendance requirement for the certificate, please make sure that you have fully accomplished the evaluation form at the end of this webinar. For those who have fully complied with the requirements of the conference, you will be receiving your certificates within two weeks' time through email. Thank you so much and see you in the coming 2021 JP2 conference sessions.